I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, you are my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. Let's pray together. Lord, when David was delivered in a mighty way from the hand of Saul, who sought to kill him, David wrote these words because he experienced your work in his life. He experienced your protection, your deliverance, that you were his shelter, his stronghold, his fortress, and he returned praise to you. O oh Lord, it is so appropriate for us to remember all that you've done for us, and to offer back our words and our hearts of praise and our lives and devotion. And so would you strengthen us in the moments that we're together today? We thank you for the opportunity to gather online. Uh, we thank you for your blessings. Meet us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Thanks for joining us online today, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook. You know the drill, but I will repeat it. We're very happy when uh, you sign in and it blesses the people who are coming to church with you in a satellite congregation, uh, especially as they see you signing in over the miles and people that they haven't seen in a long time. People are blessed to know that you are in fellowship with them, even if it's on the screen. And I hope that you will do that. This morning, if everything goes according to plan, when this segment is done, we'll be able to uh, switch over to the message that our guest speaker is giving this morning. John Van Patella has been someone that I've known for probably two and a half decades since he first began ministry with then Campus Crusade up at the University of Yukon. I had the privilege of speaking a few times at their ministry up there, uh, as well as just getting to know John over the years. And we've had, we've seen uh, university students come through that ministry and uh, see them grow in their walk with the Lord. And we're very thankful to have been supporting him and Diane now for all this time. A couple of years ago, he changed his focus and is no longer working primarily on the university campus, but he, at least the Yukon campus, he is with Athletes in Action, the Northeastern division of that and it extends from Maine out to Buffalo. And he works on college campuses, university campuses with student athletes and, uh, and with staff, with everyone involved in the athletics, sharing the gospel of Christ, teaching, and uh, just helping them to come and know and grow in their relationships with Christ. Uh, John and Diane are usually our uh, June mission, and that will be true uh, in 2022, but we're very happy to uh, have him with us today and to share with us. Speaking of our mission, I want to remind you that Adam and Janelle Lamont are our missionaries for the month of January. They are with another branch of crew. They have returned to the United States and they are working remotely, but still assisting the group that they were with over in the Middle East. And so we want to continue to enable them to do that, as well as enter into some of the other activities that they've been involved with uh, since they have been home. So your missions giving for January is very important in that regard. The easiest thing for you to do is go to our PayPal link on our website or one of the links right there on our Facebook page, and, uh, and you can give specifically to missions. Missions money has to be specifically designated, and so I hope that you will do that. And don't forget that your regular giving, your tithes and your weekly and monthly offerings can also be done online through PayPal or using the links on our Facebook page. Or if you still want to write a check, please do. First Congregational Church of Wyndham, P.O. Box 102, Wyndham 06280. Well, this morning for our scriptures, I would like to begin reading from Isaiah chapter 52, beginning with verse 7. Isaiah 52, verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. 
Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout with joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Paul quotes from this passage in Romans chapter 10, beginning with verse 8. The word is near you. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. And that is this, the message concerning the faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on one they have not believed in? How can they believe in one if they have not heard of him? How can they hear of him without somebody telling them? And how can anyone tell, how can anyone preach to them unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not all of God's people accepted the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has received our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. The word of the Lord. The psalm for our worship this morning continues with the theme of declaring and telling. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and I will extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on all of your wonderful works. They celebrate your abundant goodness. They joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all, and he has compassion on all that he's made. All your works praise you, O Lord. Your people extol you. They tell the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, it's true in our lives when we experience something that we enjoy, when we experience something whose quality just amazes us, we let other people know. We tell people. It may be that fine meal that we had with great service at a local restaurant. We let people know. It may be that athletic event that we watched. We let people know. It may be that movie that we came home from. We let people know. Things that, that we enjoy. In fact, as, as C.S. Lewis, I think, said that Praise completes the enjoyment. There's something about talking about what we've experienced that enhances it even more. If that's true in the earthly things around us, how much more true is that of you, Lord? Because there is no one like you. There is nothing as great, nothing as mighty, as powerful, as wonderful, as precious as you are. And the privilege that we have of knowing you, oh, so often we keep it to ourselves. 
we're nervous about telling anyone. We, we just don't like to, well, we, we just feel uncomfortable. Lord, so many words from the scriptures today, from the Psalms, uh, have to do with speaking of you, declaring your greatness one generation to another, extolling your name, praising you, speaking of your might so that other people would know your mighty acts, speaking of the glorious splendor of your majesty. Lord, would you strengthen us to be people who are willing to speak? Oh, and not to get preachy with people, not to get giving of guilt and condemnation, but testifying, testifying to what you've done in our lives. That's what David was doing in the psalm. He wrote the psalm to testify of what you had done in his life. So would you help us really keep in our own hearts and minds the great things that you have done in us, through us, for us, that we could share those things as an encouragement to others so that they would come to know you as well. We recognize we live in a very hostile world. This is a very hostile environment uh, from the highest parts of government through all ranks of media and journalism and academia. But the hostility against the gospel is very, very strong. But the hostility against the gospel in the first century was even stronger. And people shared the good news of Jesus and the church crew, and people came to know Christ. So would you strengthen us that we would be willing to do what Peter said, to be prepared to give a defense for the hope that we have, to be prepared to tell others about you and your work in our lives, your great salvation in Christ. Lord, that's a big stretch. It's a big stretch for some of us. We all know and love people who, know, who need to know you, who don't know you now, who don't profess anything. We know people who have seemed to have loved you in the past and have walked off in other directions. And our heart's desire is for them to come home. Lord, we may think of parents or spouses or children or grandchildren or neighbors or friends or coworkers. Would you help us, Lord, list a few names to think about people that we care about the most who aren't walking with you and that we could pray for them. We could seek them, we could pray for them, and we could be available to you to speak. Would you work that work, O oh Lord, in our hearts even now? Lord, we're thankful for the privilege that we have of supporting some ministries who want to help share the good news of Christ for Adam and Janelle in the background to some extent, at least with the finances, just helping enable the work to happen. You have to have the people behind you in order to go out. So I just pray for Adam and Janelle in that. And, and Lord, I, I believe you give them opportunities here to be more on the front lines. And I pray that you would strengthen them in those opportunities as well. So would you strengthen our hearts to be generous toward that work, promoting you and speaking of you. And for our brother John and his family, as John ministers specifically to college and university athletes and staff, I pray that you would prosper what he does and bring many young men and women to Christ. Strengthen those who already know the Lord, that they would be strong and be disciples of yours. Lord, we thank you for that as well. Lord, our hearts are continuing to be burdened by all of the strife, the stress, the, the, the political disagreements and hostility uh, between people. All of the issues pertaining to COVID and the, the animosity in terms of how people respond. And the great need. We, I thank you for the technology that continues to advance, even as the disease continues to advance. I pray, Father, that you would deliver us from this scourge. I pray mostly, though, that people would turn to you. And, and we wouldn't just have a solution that doesn't make us depend on you. And so we want to turn back to you, O oh Lord. Lord, there are people in our lives who are dealing with cancer and other significant medical issues, people dealing with significant financial reversals and struggles and questions, 
questions about your will, decisions to make, relationship things, Lord, we just want to lift them up. And in the quietness of these moments, would you hear us as we lift them up to you, Lord? Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you, Lord, for using us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to just honor you and to worship you and to praise you and to go forth and serve you all this coming week. We thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, at this point, we're going to transition over. And if everything works according to plan, we'll have a relatively seamless transition from this time of opening our worship to uh, welcoming our good brother, uh, John Vampatella. So thanks. God bless you.